Hey fellow animators, I'm Milos Czerny. Let's take a look at how to rig a bird fully done in CAD animation system. If you have ever tried to rig a bird, you have probably found out that they are pretty tricky to do, mostly because of their wings. If you don't want foldable wings, then it's pretty easy, it's just a small blob. But if you want the wings to be able to fold, you have to consider few things. I have found this blog post a while ago, it's from 2013 I know, but it's still mostly relevant anyway. It's by Faith Freedom and he talks about three options of creating a bird rig in 3ds Max, by using biped, cat or custom rig with general max bones. These are basically your options every time in 3ds Max by default, for any rig you are going to create. The reason why I am mentioning this post is that in the cat section he mentions. I came across no examples of cat being used for wing rigs. I take from this that it may not be the most feasible solution to the problem. It would appear that custom rig setups are the most commonly used method for rigging wings. Which I agree with, if you want any of the more complex controllers and options for the rig. With custom rigs you can do anything you want and anything you need, for the cost of losing cat features. However, you know I like to do everything in cat and because he didn't come across any examples of cat being used for a bird, Let's do just that. I have this low poly pigeon model here. And as with most of the characters I use in my YouTube videos, this one is available to download as well. But this time only for my Patreon supporters. Thank you all guys by the way. You can find it in the description or on my website. This will be a more advanced rig and you should have at least a basic understanding of cat before you watch this video. Also a very important thing to mention, notice how the wings are modeled in a spread out position. You always want to model the mesh in the pose from which it can reach as many other poses as possible, with fleece deformations. If the wings were modeled as folded, you would never be able to spread them for the animation. Model always has to consider animation if the plan is to animate it as well. Also, for that reason, several parts of the mesh of wings and tail are cut inside to divide the mesh a bit and to allow its folding. But we will see that a bit later. Anyway, let's start rigging already. So, as always, head to create panel, helpers and cat objects. Create an empty cat parent and always remember to zero out its position. Create a pelvis in the modify panel and place it somewhere in the upper back part of the model. Also rotate it a bit and change its dimensions to make it bigger. Now create a spine. With spine there is one special step you have to do. Select any bone from it and go to motion panel and select sub object. It will display a blue line which represents the direction of the spine. Now rotate it to somewhere where you want the chest to be. Maybe like this. Change the number of spine bones to 1, because we will not need any more for such a small model and such a small distance. You can move it to start somewhere where the pelvis ends. I have spent a bit more time adjusting the bones a bit, rotating them up a little to match the model more. This is where I want the pivot of the chest bone to be, which is always important to realize and figure out. When that is set, we can now change dimensions for the spine and chest. This time I didn't modify the mesh of chest bone with edit poly modifier because I felt like it's not needed, but for sure you can do that if you like. Now let's create a neck. I have said this several times already. If the neck of the model has to be flexible and will have a lot of movement, which with a bird it will, I like to create it as a tailbone chain and not a spine, because I like the options it gives me and I think that keyframed version of spine feels a bit weird to animate with. So we will need only 3 bones for the neck. Even though the pigeon has the neck bones crooked in real life, I will do them straight because it will not affect the end result too much anyway. While setting up the neck, I am looking at the end point of it, because that is where the pivot of the head will be. So I want to place it right. When that is done, select the last bone and hit add bone button. Which will be the head. Set it up and we are done with the neck part. 
Now create a tail for the pelvis. The tail will have three parts. The middle one, which is this one, will have three bones and will start somewhere where the pelvis ends. Make it a bit longer. As I have said, the mesh of the pigeon is split in several places to allow folding. You can see it on these edges here. That's because I want these two side parts to be able to contract inside. And that's why we need two other tailbone chains for the sides. So create another one. But give it only two bones this time, which should be enough. Place it to start further than the first one and rotate it to the side. Something like this. Now copy the settings, create another tail and paste settings as mirror to create the other side. Ok, let's add a leg to the pelvis. Start with placing the IK platform first. Somewhere to the middle of the foot. The leg will need three bones, so you can change that right away. But after that, position the ankle bone before setting up the rest of the leg. Always look at the pivot. Now add 4 digits to the ankle to create fingers. Fingers are pretty straightforward, so I am going to skip this part because it's boring and takes quite some time. The end result looks like this. The thing worth mentioning is that the first bone of the finger is usually further back inside the foot than people usually think. It's a very common mistake for beginners to place the bones too far out. If you would do that, you would not be able to bend this part of the foot at all, which would create a weird looking bend where fingers meet the foot. The other thing I will mention is that for the back finger I used only two bones because I felt like it's enough. Other than these two things, it was a completely standard procedure. Now let's position the rest of the leg. Starting from the top now. The leg can start inside a bit more. Position others as well. Always check the references of real skeletons when you are creating rigs. It doesn't have to be exactly according to reality, but it should take the important parts out of it. When you are done with it, just create another leg and it will mirror it to the other side. Easy. Don't forget to name your bones properly. Ok, now the hard part. Create an arm for the chest. Yes, the wings will be arms. We will not need either collarbone nor palm for this. And the arm will need four bones. We will start placing it from the inside, bone by bone. It's not hard when you have an idea of what you are going to do. If you don't, you need to test things out and see what works and what doesn't. Basically what we need to figure out is where the wing is going to bend and for that you have to check the references. The wing has three bones and one last one for the feathers in the end. So we just need to figure out the lengths of them and that's why I have split the model already in the places where I want the bends to happen. I will just set the lengths of the bones according to them. That's why I am telling you that the model always has to consider animation as well. 
this should be fine. Now we also need the bones for the back parts of the wings, to control them a bit more. So select the first bone of the arm and add bone to it. Place it and create another, so it's a two bone chain. Continue with the same principle, but always select that bone you want to add additional bone for, so you don't have to relink them manually. You can also use copy and paste options to speed things up, but if the bones have different parents in the hierarchy, it will not copy them in the exact same spot, but you can move them after. I am looking at where the model is split, it's not very visible, but it's there, and that basically tells you how to place the bones. This looks nice. Again, don't forget to rename things. It's boring, but it needs to be done. When done again, just create another arm and it will create a mirrored copy of the first one for you. Magic. As a final touch, you can recolor the bones if you want. And that should be it, the basic rig is done. Now the skinning part in the next video. If you like what you see, write a comment, like the video or support me on Patreon. Your contributions go directly to making more videos about cat animation in 3ds Max, which as you probably know has very limited sources anywhere on the internet. Thank you. I am Milos Czerny and thank you for watching.